Доброго дня. Good evening and we are happy to greet you at the first uh, third festival day of uh, contemporary media arts linoleum and we are continuing our lecture program. Tonight we are talking to Yevhen Shemarsky who is an artist and a co-founder of music agency Ucha, uh, the ear about art, uh, money, pixelated monkeys and talking, tokens. Uh, tonight we are going to find out how it happened that they appeared, who is to blame for that. And it seems to me that this lecture was selected not by accident, because the topic of the festival is uh, the theme of new distances, uh, closeness, presence and uh, how the last 18 months influenced the way we feel these categories and in this sense digital art and the art on digital platforms has become even more relevant and even though all our following lectures in particular on Sunday uh, the comic book program is going to pertain to closeness today it seems to me that the lecture is also going to be an organic component of the in this concept so thank you thank you for coming and I'm reminding you that you can come to the lecture program uh, having registered free of charge and now I give the floor to you again thank you uh, thank you Katya immediately I would like to say that I'm going to speak Russian this is not a principal position I'm a Russian speaking Ukrainian and so that uh, I don't get all red because of my Russianism in Ukrainian. I'm going to tell you something in Russian, if you don't mind. So the topic is NFT. By the way, monkeys uh, don't have anything to do with that anymore. I don't know how educational should this presentation be. I mean, I don't know who knows what about that. Uh, probably we're going to try to talk if we manage to do that afterwards. So, why am I telling about that? This is in no way associated with my cultural hobbies uh, in the form of music, uh, ear agency or some of our projects like photos and something else. This is associated with my other branch of activities, probably the main one. I manage software projects. I have been doing it for many years, 10 more or less. Uh, we have several companies. These are companies developing own and some other projects. One of those projects is called Ariadne and this is a project of decentralized finance. It has just so worked out. I don't know how many weird words I'm going to say. You'll tell me later. But anyway, this is a project which has a financial component fintech which is more clear the ways to transform one amount of money into a bigger one there is also an ideological part because this project is decentralized this is a protocol which does not have one master who would be sitting somewhere out there unlike centralized websites I'm not going to go too deep into that. I'm just going to say that this is the background that I have. This is uh, what they call by the word uh, by crypto. Any taxi driver or any hairdresser already has an opinion about that. Uh, it has different size to it as well. All this thing is uh, decentralized finance and NFT that we are going to come to. They attract both the best and the worst people. This is a very polarizing story. And uh, that is why there are lots of uh, people who try to use that for self-popularization. Sometimes they are very successful. There are also very lots of extraordinary minds working on the way how do you make censorship a sustainable system and how to make the world better in general. Well, uh, about NFTS phenomenon, I thought that I'm just going to talk about it in a very superficial way. Uh, should I actually tell you what NFT is yet one, once more? Or you read about it somewhere? Do I need to tell about it? 
I'm going to tell you super briefly. NFT uh, stands for non-fungible tokens. The principle of fungibility is one of the main principles of money. Uh, that is, money should be mutually replaceable. If, for example, you are given five dollars, and uh, they are well printed, uh, and uh, it, this money doesn't smell uh, like sauna, then you can exchange it for another five dollars. This is this means mutual uh, replaceability. The difference, for a very simple explanation, I hope simple. These tokens, which are uh, going around blockchain, the distributed register, most of them they are mutually replaceable. So they they could be currencies or non-currencies in the classical understanding of the world of the world. So I mean that if you were sent one bitcoin and you sent it back, you received a different one. Then its cost, the cost of this same uh, this bitcoin remained the same. In case with NFT, this uh, is similar rails. It's the same blockchain which uh, guarantees that I have given you something, but there is already a unique thing to it. It is unique because this is uh, on the level of the protocol and uh, it has a uh, rather wide area of uh, application. It is applied uh, for protection of copyright, uh, is the way to say that something belongs to you and all that. Uh, here, I think uh, on the first screen, I'm simply going to quote my Twitter uh, from somewhere else. But here, I should have put a slide from uh, Lord of the Rings where uh, Gollum says, my precious, and shows the ring. Well, this my precious is actually uh, this uh, conveys 90% of the point of NFT as digital phenomenon because the happiness, the joy of having something in the digital world, it seems real to me and uh, it is checked, let's say, it's verifiable. What do I mean here? One of the main points, opponents, let's say, what's called digital assets. This is a well, well-known uh, Bitcoin, the, what you, you and the taxi drivers know, this is also Ether, in the network of which the most of these NFTs are function circulating, also NFT themselves. So, one of the opponents, adversaries of uh, points is that I can uh, press uh, control, press control C, control V, and I have the same image for which you have paid 50, 500, to 5 million dollars. But this is not so, because uh, even if a copy of the image is made one to one, so that is, it is, it is the same image. Still, the owner of this, there is only one owner of this thing, and. And legitimizing that you can have something in the digital world, that is already the fuel of all this process. Probably the biggest contribution was made by gaming here. There is such notion as play to earn. I don't know, I'm not an expert in all that. I don't know whether it uh, replaces free to play as a term, but play to earn is a way to create a digi digital economy inside the game where the players really can, by creating some new economic uh, things, to actually implement them beneficially. So you can get, for example, a, a sword, you can sell it, and then the very fact of all that is going to be in the distributed register and blockchain and it's not going to be limited by the world of the game. This is probably uh, the most important thing. I'm not saying that this is a uh, toy of the millennials. Sorry, I'm the last of the millennials. I'm actually on the... I'm already on the border of it. I'm almost not a millennial anymore. They say that there is some studies that all digital assets, for some reason, they are something that my generation likes. I don't know whether it is so. I know even less uh, how those who are 10 or 15 are going to look at that. 
but there is statistics. Uh, for example, X Infinity game. It has more wallets with the game currency in Philippines than credit cards. Just for to see the scale of uh, how fast this snowball works. You download, you play, you earn 30 bucks, you transform it into some local currency and then you spend it. Uh, as this as the joke, you know. Uh, well, I hope that I have explained what is the difference between digital assets of simple copying of an image, but yet again, uh, the story of NFT buys is stored. You can look at it. And uh, the fact uh, that your portfolio has some JPEGs, as those who have them actually call it, it uh, tells a lot about you. When you have, it tells uh, when you actually joined all that about your interest and how crazy you are. So, the image is not in my Photoshop image, it has taken from a website of some tokenized sale. This is not a coin, this is NFT, which is cut up in many pieces. The second issue, uh, the second question that is most often asked is, who actually needs that? Who? You can read uh, some headline that some people uh, sold his painting or set of paintings for, I don't know, many millions, 500 millions or something. Who is on the other side? Who are those strange people who pay money for GPEGs? Well, there are two uh, camps, two groups of people. One part says that, well, you know, there is no economy as such. It's just people who resell them to each other. Filling uh, uh, this industry with pseudo turnovers. So let's say I have 10 others and their market cost is like $40,000. You create some GPEG for which I pay you this $40,000 still evaluating ethers and now we have 20 ethers, $80,000 in total. Uh, how possible is it to sell this um, JPEGs back? That's the question. There is also a huge category of people who have come to digital currencies. Uh, they did it a long time ago. And due to this dizzy and he will have everything, now they have a heap of money on their hands. These are uh, the people who I call ETH Nouveau Riches. But actually, there is some currency, currency it used to cost three cents, now it costs three thousand dollars. And uh, also, being a person who observes over this many years, who participated in that in many, for many years, I know that except those who are in a coma, there are very few people who really manage to hold their investment from the very from the day within seven or eight years. That's very very rare case. Most probably, some easy money can be made of it, but they are dissolved just as easily. I mean that uh, I also uh, did lots of stupid things in digital world and uh, I observed how, you know, uh, Lamborghini actually are flying out of the window of your money that you managed to do nothing with. Somebody is saying that all this are sums drawn on a piece of paper and nobody is going to give millions of dollars for GPEGs. There is a also a better opinion, the one that I feel more for is when people actually launder their money with the help of uh, uh, car washes. Um, you know, that's an example from Breaking Bad. They are not uh, creating any economy. It's like just a regular uh, place for washing cars and the mechanisms don't really work well. If a person decided to create a collection of JPEGs and sell it, then 
there are lots of engaged uh, confirmation set like unknown school uh, uh, boy uh, from the UK sold his collection for 100,000. I see no point doubting that against, I mean, that the tide actually raises all boats. And uh, against uh, this uh, huge growth of digital currencies, the cost of this new category of assets can grow at the same speed. So there's this, there's the second opinion that yes, there are lots of people who want to quickly buy and to quickly sell, but uh, how much they influence in that market is very hard to say. Most probably the last month or two, this is really some super manic state because people are buying everything without seeing it because they see how quickly the cost grows, relatively at least. Is it going to be possible to jump out of it quickly? We don't know. There are more conservative approaches. If you want a piece of that pie. One of the simplest approaches here is that if all this travels on the net of the same air, then simply buy an, air, buy an ether. That's something similar to uh, selling and buying space during the golden rush. And of course, there is an important second set as uh, ecological factors. And uh, most probably here I would need a comment to tell you what is that portrait of a person who is inside all that. It seems to me that there are several characteristics. That's what's called extremely online. So these are people who are chained to their screen and to crypto Twitter. Uh, so this is the Twitter where some crypto topics are discussed. It is their wish to fulfill some children's dreams that probably weren't fulfilled or maybe they're coming back to those. So you know all those uh, uh, pictures, all, all the stuff about children's collections that you can remember, this comes back. Coming at you quick, let's say. It is multiplied and only now you can just pay big money for that. Where do you get this money from? I mean, there are different situations that could be a fund that simply buys everything that they see because they think that in 10 years it's going to cost twice more. This might be a crazy schoolboy who bought lot, a lot of Ether and didn't sell it. Or it may be somebody else. It may be someone who really likes certain style. So, as for me, this is a very ugly picture to the right. It's also a screenshot of some NFT. Later, to those who are somehow interested in that, I can find you the links. So, this is definitely the status thing, some of them, not this one, but for instance, crypto punks, uh, punks, they will be at the different one, the same Rolex watches. Uh, this is just the way to say that, yes, I really have got lots of money, or I am here since the very beginning. This is kind of a point uh, for a peacock when uh, the animal or the bird is signaling that I have a nice immune system, I'm healthy, I can even copulate more and more. And uh, as for now, we've got this and we have a more complicated reproductive behavior. One of the really weird points is the ownership of the belongings of things. I've got this thing and you don't have it, so choose me. In the world and in the generation which doesn't give a shit about Rolex, you should find something which would be similar to it, something analog which would approve that 
you're a cool one or you are a reproductively perspective one. According to some bad joke, a bad joke of our universe, this status signal sometimes is just this JPEG file. Uh, the land online or the land plot online is a huge different niche which has lots of things happening in it and the purchase of the totally virtual real estate. This real estate is in the gaming spaces, this real estate can be in any multiverses, as we may say. Maybe in five years we'll have one orthodox multiverse from Mark Zuckerberg, but so far this is the super fragmented thing where you can have whatever you want. All of that is accessible through browser. All of that, well, I don't know how it can be even described if you know what Second Life is. So this is the result of the Second Life or the continuation of Second Life. If you know Minecraft, formally speaking, this is the world of Minecraft. This world sometimes can provide you the purchase of the part of the land, the landlord, and to spend lots of money for that. And of course, the majority of that is rather speculative, but the purchase means two points, that you can really either refuse or cancel all of the materialistic things and earthly things, or you've got lots of the things and you're a bit to uh, making a bit too much, or you really trust whatever is happening. So you trust that the network where your so-called land in the talkings, reflected in the talkings, is located, it will function forever. So here you should have a discount for the understanding of the principle of some blockchain technologies. So to simplify all of that really, the essence of this lack of trust, this trustless, is one of the important characteristics of these systems, that they do not depend on a certain person. For instance, I am the coder, so I begin to create my own site. I create a certain backend which processes and provides the information which you can see at the web page. At the website I'm selling the images of golden rings. Let's assume that. Tomorrow I'm sick of that, so I close this website and uh, you cannot either sell or buy or exchange. There won't be the secondary market for that, so everything is over. So to compare that in the blockchain, the situation is different. There is a certain immutability, unchangeable essence and independence on a certain person. This is a long story and topic. I will not delve deep into that because you will just fall asleep and fall down. Here to the right, this is the screenshot of what is named CryptoPunk. CryptoPunk is a collection created by the company of Larva Labs, it seems to me in 2017, and they were had a real breakthrough and without any appeals in the price. This is the totally virtual signaling and, st um, I do apologize, status signaling, because you publish in Twitter the picture of a punk as an avatar and it is already the belonging. You are the part of this crowd. So whether you can publish a picture without having the NFT for $500,000, of course you can do that. But I doubt that it can become the foundation for your activities in the social networks for a long time. So this uh, rare shit is not just to assess it. It's just rare when I've written rare shit. There are some examples of these punks, like 5,000 pictures or 1,000 pictures. There won't be similar pictures anymore. Those who had enough time uh, to buy them or to rebuy them, that's good for them. They use a kind of human mechanics for that. And who is the first uh, to take it? 
I can afford myself to buy it. This is the community which forms and shapes around some status things. And again, it can be compared with some, well, I may say limited collections of watches or some heavy luxury, but not just luxury which you can buy any moment, but luxury which you need to choose for and to search for at the secondary level. Whatever can be much more, I don't know, look like Stan Smith, like a big economy around the sneakers is based on that as well. The company of Adidas is creating a drop of 100 of pairs, or I don't know how many, 1,100 or 10,000, and there won't be any more. And a big number of people are rebuying them, reselling them, because this is the rarity. And this is the same simple principle in the basics of NFT. So, why do I have this internal conflict within me? Well, I wouldn't say as an artist, I would say as a person with some aesthetic preferences. Uh, these monkeys, in fact, were at Sotheby's yesterday, and yeah, this is the picture which was sold as the artwork. Whether you can assess them as the artwork, well, of course, they are just beyond any context of art, of modern art, well, almost, because those are kind of outsiders which are imposters, they name themselves the outsiders, but in fact, as for the risk and the modern art, they are not outsiders at all. The majority of the creators are totally nameless 3D artists, just someone. I don't want to my words to include some neglection to all of the people who create successful NFT, God forbid. But I consider that what the people is doing, it is just revolting. But it doesn't mean, it, yes, it is of bad quality, but it doesn't mean that it's priceless. It doesn't have a price, because this is the part of the internet history, if you want. This is, this doggy, I mean, the the kennel is part of MEMS as well, and the MEM is of NFT as a part of it. This screenshot is taken from the open sea, the marketplace of NFTs, and this is also taken for user picks. This collection has the name of MeBits. I don't know whether you can see the prices here. Well, some people paid somehow several hundreds of thousands of dollars or dozens of thousands. Why? How quickly people associated themselves with all of that? Why do they pay for that and they don't pay for buckwheat bread? <laughs> it, it's not that easy to say. This is kind of a comprehensive, complex thing. All of that is done through Twitter, through the social networks, through bloody influencers and there is one, I would say, the most interesting for me, a bigger topic within NFT as a digital asset, is the generative art. When the person is creating an algorithm which later is gener generating several, a limited number of visual works. So this is taken out of the famous generative artworks. It has the name of Fidenza and it's a kind of a diamond. There are just several of them. The structures are changing, the patterns are changing, the colors are changing. All of that is defined by the algorithm which is recorded, as they say, on chain. So why is it cool? Because uh, they were one of the first to create it, because lots of people really are close to this visual work, whether you can buy or sell any generated things by the algorithm, well, you should try. We never know. There's lots of totally rattle there. And in fact, this is the example of that kind of shit, because a wonderful lady, Marin, is writing that I have acquired such a kind of a gold bear and this is the path to generational wealth.
That's it. I don't know how much she paid for that and how much she will take for to sell it, but the bear is really objectively bad. And again, someone is buying a JPEG file which was done, I don't know, as quickly as possible and hopes that it will bring some money. Maybe it will bring some money. We never know. I'm almost in the end of my narrative and I just don't understand whether it was useful, but still. The main platforms and playgrounds where you publish and where you have the roots of the majorities of these collections is an open sea. There are a bit of more niche stories like Foundation where you sell something curating the process. OpenSea is not curated, well, except violence and porn. It's just an Amazon for NFT and you can easily make it with my help or with uh, someone's help and to create a whole gallery, the website, the representation of your open sea, anything. So how do you form the price and the demand and the importance of all of that? I think that they base upon the crowd demand. Because just for my interest, I was searching through some Ukrainian experiments and I found not that many well, maybe I was not searching enough, not that many successful ones. I found musical NFT of Evgeny Vashenko, algorithmic one and really cool one. Seems to be sold or on sale now and then there's just a void emptiness. The majority of OpenSea publishers are anonymous, of course, but so maybe half of all of those people are from Ukraine. I don't know. I doubt that, honestly speaking. But for instance, as for the buckwheat bread, there is zero applications, zero bids. So buckwheat bread was never assessed, even for one hundredth of Ethereum. When I tell technically how we can do that, well, I think Google will do it much better than I will. Yes, it's easier to take this technical curve of training for anything, but now it's not that um, substantial. For instance, if you are the creator of any sport, like if you know how to use Photoshop or you know how to create the websites in WordPress, I'm sure that you will get to know how to download the browser plugin and how to take some stock and then to upload it and to use it. Well, this is the story that all of those assets, as for now, are paid by tokens of one network. Well, there are lots of networks, but Orthodox is the one. So, skipping this obstacle, I will remind you that this obstacle is already skipped by the majority of key of taxi drivers. Well, again, I'm offending the taxi drivers. I'm using them as the people who don't have anything in common with that professionally. Just anyone. So you may do that. It's easy. What idea you should approach to that weird? Whatever I see is not just some super insights, but they are the works which were organized into the collection have certain success. The number of the works in which can be thought about like a thousand to two thousand units. Something which you can see the limit of that there won't be more, but still they are rather numerous to launch a community. Why? As when I was looking at some of the interesting fables together with my wonderful acquaintance Oleg Spodeko, they created something which they noticed as an NFT, like an issue. Some online sculpture, some moving picture with music. So, of course, or unfortunately, there were no bids for acquirement, for purchase. Why? Well, because you can't do that on your own. 
You think that this craziness is disseminating for everything, the discovering anything. You just created something. But in fact, it's a very systematic effort. This is the collection. This is the high-quality web front. This is some community which begins to develop all of that. With trembling, tremor in the hands, they record some videos why it is cool exactly. This is how it's working. And in the end, my favorite uh, quote from Barico, the dialogue of two participants. Sometimes I ask myself what we are waiting for. We are waiting that, that when it's becoming too late. Where we are now at in all of those NFTs in the timeline, we don't know it. It may be super high, where we have uh, the rocks in Ethereum and they cost $500,000 each and there is an abyss after it, nothing and a void after it. This is one extreme. And the second point that it's super early stage and the assets within the games, within the multiverse, within the minds who are now five or ten years old will be much more numerous. Some of the facets will be become blurred and that is why I just purchase them and create them. Something like that. I think that's it from me. I had about 40 minutes to speak about. So, Katerina, if you've got any of the questions, I can answer. If there are no questions, we can ask the audience. Maybe you would like to reflect upon anything. Unfortunately, the microphone is not working. I have seen twice uh, the people, uh, the, the um, profiles in Instagram when they said that the uh, their works are sold in NFT. I could see that really. So what can I do with that? Is just uh, do you just post any pictures from the internet mostly, and somehow this picture can be sold, right? Well, thank you for the question. It's definitely a bit beyond the NFTs themselves. The nature of everything digital. Yes, your rights and not that easy to defend, to protect. So maybe, maybe you should try to take some legal sphere to prove your rights for the picture. But there are lots of those repercussions. For instance, I created uh, the oil painting. You came and took a picture of it using Pentax or iPhone and you published it as an NFT. I come to you and I say, okay, what's that? That's my painting. And you say, no, this is my performance in which I'm taking a picture of your painting. So it is hard to prove. It is a gray zone, truly. Because Fidenza, which I showed to you, you know, those mega expensive uh, things, generative uh, they are not shown anyway the very fact of the, the sales is also and uh, releases NFT so somebody else makes NFT and writes Fidenza was sold for one million dollars and there it has the same image of Fidenza but that's not that work the same uh, and look for example on Twitter there are this iconoclastic tweets like Elon Musk launched uh, the rocket for the first time or Jack Dorsey said that Bitcoin is cool or something else and people not have any, anything in common with the author take the content of this tweet uh, they actually show it in the form of an NFT and they try to sell it this is probably who is the first that is going to do it and most probably if you think about some global things, 
you won't manage to to have a career and have big mo big money on somebody else's art because one thing I mean, because as this is all selling. Uh, uh, papers, most probably. If I sell this paper to Dick Dorsey, that's my first tweet. By the way, he actually sold it, his first tweet ever. Then he's the author of the product. He sells it and actually sells it for some uh, half a million or something. I can also make an NFT with the tweet of Dick Jack Dorsey, but you know, what's the point of it? So, something like that. I think that um, if um, the bar is very low, if somebody simply spams the network of uh, with twenty dollar or hundred dollar sales of somebody else's picks, I probably haven't answered your question. What what happens in specific cases? But yes, these are very gray zones. Unfortunately, the microphone is not working. I cannot interpret the question. Yes, hello, thanks for the lecture. I'll get used to my voice now on the microphone. First of all, I'm interested in NFT as uh, not as a speculative asset, but as an asset for management. Because I tried to find at least one of startups that would use NFT as security tokens, let's say. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Not utility, not for speculation and not for sales, but for certi unique certificate. And if the certificate as, um, you know, a voting share, maybe you know such examples. Because now, I, I don't want to make my own mistakes because I'm now creating the project like that. A voting share inside an infrastructure, inside digital, you mean, in some blockchain, not in external world. Maybe because uh, this is a non-issue. Because inside there are some fully distributed systems, they can be managed with the help of DAO. DAO as uh, the way to find consensus among the big number of people, that's a bigger thing. So there are just tokens of this DAO who is... Uh, okay, I'll interrupt you here. If this is the right to vote, which documents some unique thing, like let's say right to something. Then in my head, I don't have any projects which are doing that. But I think that the problem is that, that on the level of a blockchain, there is no problem like that. And for outside world, all this doesn't have any legal power. Yes, but I'm not talking about outside world. I'm talking about digital and online. The thing is that now we have the situation when there is a cycle, this American plus European, regulators which uh, really uh, put obstacles for the companies which work on the crypto market because they are actually creating obstacles for the entry of new players on that market. Uh, the security tokens are now recognized. Uh, at least I remember lots of startups who simply because their token was uh, recognized by security, they got some sentences and some of them yeah on the run on the run yes on the run uh, somewhere in offshore zones so what they managed to hide and nft as an alternative to security tokens because they are not a financial asset they're just an asset and uh, all the list sec organizations organizations like sec they do not have jurisdiction it seems to me that this is just a workaround and uh, if uh, we talk about sec this is not a topic of the lecture i think that uh, they're just using a totally different measurement they cover up by protecting some small retailers and investors they cover it to prevent something that they believe they want to pre yes they want to present a monopoly for making money yes 
or it seems to them that they are doing it or they are really doing it, doesn't matter. But um, the main th things that they grab by the butt, that's uh, some, that's scum. scam. These are the people who collect money, don't do anything. Most probably there are gray situations like that, but what I wanted to say is that specifically if these people, even if their voting rights were documented in the form of NFT, it would have helped because uh, they uh, they have uh, charges against them under different articles and it doesn't matter in which format their right, the digital rights are in. It is important that sex believes that what is an equivalent of that in the real world. Uh, in this case, I'm just mostly worried about, not about American investors that can buy those tokens, uh, but actually I'm more worried about myself not to get under jurisdiction of American regulators. And in this case, for me, NFT is one of the ways to attract donations, investments, without the risk to be under the jurisdiction of some American supervision bodies. Yes, maybe, but actually I didn't go deep in that. You don't know examples like that, no. I don't know examples like that. Uh, why do you, would you refuse from this mutual repossibility of your asset in favor of non-fungible? Well, it is not obvious. Uh, the legal thing, it seems to me, is that that sex simply uh, beats you not uh, hits you in the face and on the passport and uh, the standard of the token that it has been issued it is secondary to them of course it is clear that all this is a gray zone I don't want to exclude this uh, possibility that maybe their framework is actually totally different they are boomers are sitting that are sitting there tiktokers yeah what are they doing here Thanks. Well, if you don't have any questions from the telegram, I didn't provide my contacts, by the way, but you can find them. I'm Shimalski on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram as well. Yes, even, well, in this case, if there are no more questions, then we thank you for the lecture and uh, you can pass all your contacts uh, in a private conversation. And for now, we invite you to continue coming to our lectures and especially I would like to draw your attention to the lectures which I'm curating. This is the presentation of a comic book. There's a discussion and conversation with Jenny Olinik, the illustrator, and also a conversation about close things with people who deal with comic books. It's all going to be on Sunday. Here, register and ask your questions. Thank you.